Hey everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the IRC Fireside Chat. Uh, this episode is a collaboration with Front Wing Damage and F1 India Memes. Today we'll be talking about uh, the F1 tra- driver transfer market. This is a topic which we can talk about every single week and yet there will be about 20 different changes to the rumours that we've heard. That's potentially why they call it silly season after all. With us today, our audience, we have Anuj from F1 India Memes. Aditya from Front Wing Damage and Kapil who is one of the most senior members of IRC and of course me, uh, Marinello Baby or Adil Chinoy, however you like it, who is also a part of the IRC team. So uh, gentlemen, I think that given the way the season is going, Formula 1 is not that interesting anymore uh, except for a few incidents here and there but one thing that will excite all of our, all of our fans is where are people going to go? Uh, what flag are they going to carry or where next? So, I think let's start with probably the most senior driver in Formula 1, Kimi Raikkonen. Kapil's favourite driver of all time right here. So Kapil, we let you start. So what do you think about Kimi? Do you think he's going to stay on after the season? Honestly, it doesn't matter. We all know he's doing it for a hobby right now. And uh, I'm a little disappointed to see that he's not the number one Alfa Romeo driver right now. So maybe it is time for him to move on. Give give the young blood a position for the good, for the better. Yeah, that's my opinion anyway. Because it's been a lo- long and hard season for uh, not season, a long second stint of his career after he's come back to Ferrari and well, it just hasn't panned out. So I think it's curtains for now. So I have my own opinion on this, but of course, let's move on to Aditya first from Front Wing Damage. Uh, what do you think of Kimi? Um, yes, he's staying on the sport. Does he deserve to? Who's going to replace him? Uh, what do you guys think? I think he should retire. Okay, like forget about the fans, forget about everything else. But if you're an F2 driver looking up, and then you see a 39-year-old in a in an F1 seat, and he's not doing particularly well, you're like. I want that seat. That seat should be mine. And uh, there are many drivers who are quick in F2 and definitely talented, who definitely can uh, make the step up. I would name Callum Eilat. He's been very impressive this season. So uh, if Kimi is to retire, uh, which I think he will, Eilat should uh, uh, replace him at Alpha. Yeah, and, and interesting you bring that up because Eilat is, I believe, part of the FDA. Uh, if I'm not wrong, and given Ferrari's involvement in in Alpha uh, selection of drivers, do you feel that? But at the same time, you do have potential candidates like Schwartzman, Mick Schumacher. Schumacher, of course, I don't believe is as good good as the first two men drivers I mentioned. But let's face it, you can't ignore the Schumacher name. Do you really feel Eilat will be chosen ahead of Schwartzman and and Schumacher? I think Schwartzman will stay in for another year in uh, F2. If he doesn't win the championship, that is. If he wins the championship, he gets the alpha seat, in my opinion. That's an interesting concept. And Anuj, do you agree? Do you think that Eilat is the cha- is? Do you think Kimi will retire in the first place? And do you think Eilat is his replacement? Yeah, so as Tony Stark once said, part of the journey is the end. So, yeah, Kimi has had a good, good enough career this first stint. And then when he came back with Lotus, those two years with Lotus were like magical. And again at Ferrari, it was not that good, but yeah, and slowly he just just like he lost interest or something and now he's like completely gone. So yeah, I think he should retire. I don't see why he should continue in Formula One. Yeah, as for Ferrari, I think as part of their engine deal, they have one seat in Alpha reserved for the Ferrari drivers. So I think someone from if Formula Two is getting promoted, it should be Schwartzman. He's Wait. been exceptional and the He's a rookie and the first thing that he said coming into the first race weekend is what was like he has his eyes on the championship and he has been like that since from the start. I think he's the championship leader now. I think he is, yes. Yeah, yeah so he, is. he has a pretty good chance of winning it and if he does win then he can't stay in Formula 2 for the next season so yeah, he'll move on to F1 probably with Alpha. Uh, I just but, want to bring uh, you back to one yeah, point you said earlier. Sorry, couple. Uh, you said that Ferrari have one seat reserved at Alpha. Is that is that something that you assume, or is it something that's part of the contract between Alpha and Ferrari? 
I think that's part of a deal because Alpha has the Ferrari engines with them. So it's it's a part of a deal that one seat of Alpha is reserved for Ferrari drivers. If you see in the past as well, uh, this time it's Antonio Giovinazzi. He's a Ferrari driver. Charles Leclerc, he was a Ferrari driver. Pas- uh, Pascal Berlin, was he a Ferrari driver? Uh, no. Uh, no, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Mercedes. Who was with Mercedes. Pascal. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, th- I think I- I've read it somewhere that Alfa have a deal with Ferrari that one seat should be reserved for the Ferrari drivers. That that actually makes sense. Uh, sorry, couple, you were saying something which I interrupted. Uh, why don't you go ahead? Uh, coming back to what uh, Aditya said about the FTA, the Ferrari Driver Academy. Um, do you think that even though Kimi is on the back foot right now, coming to the end of his career, do you think that? Then the person next in line should still be given preference to his seat, even okay. Though he hasn't performed to his best so far in the season, but at the end of the day, if he does still outperform his teammate, do you think that he should still deserve that seat over somebody from the FTA itself? Maybe Giovinazzi is the one underperforming. Exactly. So that's exactly my point. Like, is so far he has been doing well. I don't know if. Uh, the team is just not focusing on Kimi as much. That would be a ridiculous claim to even make. But uh, in at the end of the day, even if Raikkonen did outperform Giovinazzi, I think this 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 deal is more or less sealed because of just because of his age, I believe. Like uh, there's kind of been a stagnancy in Formula One, so it would be a breath of fresh air for Alfa Romeo, especially to have someone new come in. Yeah, I, I certainly believe Kimi is is not leaving because he's going to be fired. If he wants an extension, I'm sure that Alpha will grant it. But I believe it's more that he. I think I see signs of disinterest in him. I think he's done with Formula One in general. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And I think that's really, that brings us to another very interesting topic. Kimi's a racing fanatic. You see him doing dirt dirt track stuff on Instagram and stuff like that. So what do you think he's going to do next? You think he's going to stay? In some kind of racing, you think like emulate Alonso by going to IndyCar, or what do you think Kimi's actually going to do? Couple, you're you're a huge Kimi fan. What do you think he's actually going to? Uh, is he going to hang up his racing boots for good or gloves? I would say yes. Though r- rally cross is his grassroots, uh, not grassroots. I would say is his passion. He did try out for it all uh, in the beginning of his career, but it didn't pan out. I think. I think just from his general mentality in the last few years, I just have a feeling like he just wants to hang up his boots and just call it a day. He's he's proved to the world that he is fast, and I don't think he cares about anyone else's opinion other than his own right now. Fair enough, Anuj. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, I agree. And anyways, in the end, it's just a hobby for him. So yeah, if he come back, he might come back. You can't talk about Kimi and F1 without talking about his hobby. No one can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was probably the funniest moment of Kimi, Kimi that I have ever seen personally. Funnier than even the the ra- the radio in Abu Dhabi. But and Aditya, uh, final consensus on what Kimi's next step are? Uh, step step is. Uh, driver coach for his son. <laughs> yeah, um, his son is actually quite good. Like if you look at the way the size of that kid and the way he throws that go kart yeah. around, he's talented. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's definitely got the genes. We couple, yeah. you may yet see another icon in Formula One in your lifetime. Mm. <laughs> I look forward to it. We're talking about Raikkonen, and let's let's move on to his his best friend on the grid, Sebastian Vettel. It wouldn't be a <clears throat> driver transfer conversation without talking about Sebastian Vettel's move to Racing Point, or in this case, Aston Martin. First of all, do you actually see anything stopping that deal? Personally, I don't think so, and I think according to the rumors, that's like multiple sources. He's already signed a three-year deal as their driver and as the ambassador of Aston Martin. So, oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's ambassador as well. Uh, sounds like a good deal. I think profitable for Aston Martin as well because uh, Toto Wolff said that Aston Martin has a huge number of customers in Germany, and having a German driver at, as the ambassador after the Will sell out thing. It'll be like a huge booster for them. Someone from his experience would definitely bring and something new to the table and probably, yeah, head them in the right direction. They've had a s- slew of uh, 
mismanagement that kind of curbed the progress in the last few years yeah. going from what force india to racing point and i don't know there's so many bad deals in the mix i think they just need someone solid to lead them and i i have no uh, no doubt that vettel is a prime candidate for them you yeah. know in fact and, in fact uh, one thing i'd like to talk about is vettel's time at red bull um i think that point of time red bull was sponsored by infinity and yes. he was immensely hands on to help infinity with development of their um sporting edition of road cars there i don't remember what that line was called but uh he would help them with development of their premium vehicles and i think that that was one of he has called out before that that's something he particularly enjoyed doing um, yeah i think yeah go ahead uh, short term music video that was also promotion for an infinity car or something yes uh, there was also a lovely ad where he uh, threw where he was a sales salesman for infinity or was it ricardo i'm not sure where the they drifted the infinity car around to show the customer and the customer basically shot their pants but eventually the helmet was pulled off and there was a formula and driver sitting in the seat uh but, lucky people i swear i would have loved to be that car. i would have bought the car on, on the spot purely because it was touched by a god <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah i think helping development of the car in aston martin and mercedes have actually worked together a lot uh for their development of road cars i think i spoke about this in previous editions of the fireside chat but do you feel that the collaboration will extend to formula 1 where they'll become like the alpha to the ferrari uh i don't think so i don't think so uh racing point or uh, aston martin would like i think so being a understudy to mercedes would cap them off uh, race wins and podiums well not to not to not to harp on the point of the pink mercedes any longer but aren't they doing exactly that right now by essentially buying the 2019 mercedes car when i say buying i mean copying the aero parts and buying some of the essentials like the suspension and the brake ducts and stuff like that what i meant was like if you see red bull and toro rosso uh even if toro rosso performs pretty well red bull keep uh, staying ahead of them so uh when you're getting a driver like vettel uh, i'm sure vettel still wants to win So uh, I don't think so they want to be an understudy uh, as such That's a good yeah, point I, might, what, yeah. I think there's a slightly different dynamic that Vettel could bring to uh, this entire ecosystem of Mercedes and AMR uh, So let's not forget that Vettel is one of the the smartest drivers on the grid the smartest. He's, yeah, the smartest he's got a degree and I And, and not just that his passion for thirst and knowledge is surpasses anyone else on the grid but um yeah i i think that is a fair point um anuj who do you think will actually re- who do you think he will actually replace of course stroll is the highest like is has the highest likelihood to stay at the, stay at the team given uh, the financial reasons and rightfully so um but perez is undoubtedly the better driver Do you think Aston Martin need that financial backing or do you think that um they'll have a Perez Vettel partnership next year? Well, nothing to take uh, away from Stroll. Um or Perez the issue of finance is one of the major con- factors when it comes to F1. You ha- you need you need the funds to keep the ball rolling. And I think at the end of the day that could be the deciding factor that could remove Perez from the equation. Fair enough. Uh, what about you, Anuj? Uh, I don't see Perez keeping the team because even if Lawrence Stroll, he's he he doesn't technically own the team. He's the leader of the constructum that owns the team. So there are various stakeholders. So even then, I think Lance Stroll, he's not been that that bad in his performance this year, uh, P4 in Hungary, and uh, yeah, so. Perez is going to move and there is one more interesting theory that Perez was actually approached by I think either Haas or Alfa Romeo for this seat. So Haas and Alfa Romeo, I that would be interesting to see Perez back as part of the uh, Ferrari family. For those of you who do not know, Perez did grow up in the FDA uh, and was dipped uh, to replace I think Massa back in the day. 
but I believe or I believe he was tipped to join Ferrari at some point but I think uh, he didn't want to wait too long and chose to move to McLaren instead either way uh, what's done is done and I think it'll be a shame to see him see him leave the sport uh, just like we saw Hulkenberg leave the sport last year that was I think a shock to all of us because Hulkenberg is uh, on his day and on not not just on his day he's one of the most consistent consistent and I think if you heard his uh, review of the Racing Point car, one of the most technical drivers in terms of feedback. And that brings me to, let's talk about Hulkenberg now. I think there are a lot of rumours going around that he will actually return to the sport next year in a reserve driver capacity. Uh, What have you guys heard of that? Do you think that will actually come to fruition? Aditya, let's start with you. It might. Like, uh, drivers moving around in a reserve driver capacity is, can surely be possible. Uh, I think if the uh, COVID situation still continues into next year, which is a big possibility, I think uh, Mercedes will uh, increase their reserve uh, driver numbers. Uh, so Hulkenberg would be an, adi- uh, an addition to that. Yeah, I think be- being in a reserve driver role would maybe suit Hulkenberg a bit more because of his technical understanding and. Uh, yeah, he can definitely lead uh, the develop uh, the development of the car from the background. Yeah, and not to mention the German connection. Oh um, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course, Anuj. I think that uh, the the interview you mentioned of Hulken, Hulkenberg describing racing point car, I think that was the thing that sold Toto Wolf to sign him as a reserve driver. About the all, all the insights that he can get, even though the Mercedes is like dominant right now, but. Still, they, they still want to improve and of course the 2022 regulations, if no, if something doesn't work according to them, then they'll have a pool of brilliant drivers to improve their car. Uh, talking about a pool of uh, brilliant drivers, who, who do you have in mind? For Mercedes? Yeah, apart from Russell, I don't really see... So, given eventually Bottas and Hamilton will both leave the team, right? And right now they only have um, have one person, um, which is Russell. No, you're forgetting uh, Stoffel Van Dorn. Um And Esteban Ocon. Yeah, I think Ocon is uh, set with Renault for a few more years. But uh, Stoffel yeah, Van Dorn, he's, he's... Out. he's still part of the Mercedes system, but he's been loaned out by Toto Wolf to get him a seat in uh, Renault. That's actually That actually makes sense. That kind of fits a pu- the puzzle well together, given that uh, Ocon could be a better Bottas to Russell uh, than Bottas is to uh, Hamilton. I think it would be far more competitive for Mercedes, a lot like the 2016 season. And let's talk about Russell's capability. I'm comparing him to Hamilton right now. But Kapil, do you really think that Russell has the capability to um, or I know the bot. By the way, for those, uh, if you, in case you missed it, uh, Bottas was announced as the driver for 2021 for Mercedes earlier today. Uh, so a huge congratulations to Valtteri. Um, we'll talk about whether that was deserving or not in a second. But either way, he has been an extremely important part of the team, and a huge congrat- congratulations for him. Do you think he deserve he deserved that seat couple, or do you think it was done? more to protect Hamilton's streak of wins? I think the philosophy in Mercedes is to keep winning. Uh, as much as they would like Hamilton to win, I don't think that's their primary focus. Yeah. It just happens to be the the perspective that we finally catch that Hamilton always wins and Bottas is just the wingman. I don't think that's the moving on to the point that you made. Does he deserve the spot? Absolutely. I mean, this, what, there's nothing to take away from a number two driver. I mean, he's still getting the number two spot more or less every single time. So, how is that? I mean, though the competition may not be as close as we'd want it to be, for the at the end of the day, for Mercedes, it's still a win-win. Um, comparing Bottas to Russell, well, I can't say yet. Uh, probably, I would say Russell is more deserving at this point, having seen his performances in the last few races. He's been out driving that Williams like he's nobody's business. Yeah, uh, really promising start for him. And at the pace he's going, I think there's a good chance of him getting that Mercedes uh, seat in a few years' time. 
Russell to Mercedes, Bottas staying at stay, uh, staying there in the team. Aditya, your your thoughts? In my opinion, uh, judging a driver by the past three races and telling if he needs to go to a top team like Mercedes is uh, it's a bit unfair because uh, Russell still ca- he's still only in his second year, so he still uh, has uh, room to make mistakes, uh, room to like improve and grow. He's not a finished product. I think so. Mercedes is a team where you go if you're a finished product. Like I have, I've had like at least five years of experience. I know the sport in and out. Because driving for Mercedes has its own pressure. You're in the best car. Yeah, you're automatically in the title race. So uh, putting in inexperienced driver as Russell wouldn't be fair on Russell because, like I said, he's inexperienced. It'll be completely unfair if he messes up or you know makes mistake. Last week I spoke about the holy trinity of youngsters, which is Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and George Russell. Both Max and Leclerc made the move to top teams very, very early in on the career, and both of them delivered in terms of results, at least. Do you not f- like Anuj? Do you feel that Russell will have? Do you feel that Russell, even though he's an unfinished product, like Aditya said? Do you really feel that um, he would be lacking something which Bottas is giving the team right now? No, I don't think he'll be lacking something. If only, I think he'll push Hamilton even more than Bottas is pushing. You, as Aditya said, you can't judge a driver by uh, three race, three or four races into the season. But you're forgetting he outqualified his teammate the whole season in 2019, and that was Robert Kubica. Even though he's not that fast, but he is still pretty fast. Yeah, and he's yeah. experienced in his rookie season. Russell outqualified his teammate in all the races, and you have to see the his junior career. I think he won the F2 championship in his rookie season as well. Yep. So yeah. that's that's pretty, that's something. And yeah, if I think Russell is more deserving of the Mercedes seat than Bottas, and by signing Bottas for 2021, Lewis Hamilton has just won his eighth championship. Personally, I do believe that Russell is going to be great in Formula One, and I completely agree with you that Hamilton's A championship is secured. There is no way that, or I think it would have been very similar to Leclerc at Ferrari, given the fact that Vettel is this brilliant four-time world champion. Leclerc actually managed to come in and compete with Vettel uh, and go toe-to-toe with a four-time world champion, and that just shows that the youngsters. Of Max R- Russell and Leclerc are not to be taken lightly, and I feel that if Toto delays too much, there is a high chance what happened to Perez will happen to Russell as well. Another top team may lack him up. I strongly feel that if they wait too long, Max will move to Mercedes, and Red Bull will jump on George Russell at the earliest opportunity. The other option is that if science doesn't work out. Russell moves to Ferrari, but either way, Russell will get a top top drive by 2022. That is something I have no doubt about, and I and I think that in in his first season, if he signed in 2021, he would have beaten Hamilton, uh, hands down. I don't think Hamilton is that quick anymore. Uh, he may have been quick in his prime. He's certainly not quick anymore. He's quicker than Bottas at times, not in one lap, but especially over a race. But I think Russell, with the young blood, uh, with that pure determination, but either way, um. Bottas obviously did something better than Russell's presentations. Uh, <laughs> yes, and uh, we touched upon signs. Uh, sorry, I touched upon signs in the last conversation. So I think it's a great segue to talk about that move to Ferrari, the most coveted seat in Formula One. Whether it should be there or not is doubt now for me. But he's gotten that the hot seat in Formula One. He's part of Ferrari, the seat with the most scrutiny. Do you think that was the right decision? Do you think he's going to be able to handle the pressure? Yeah, definitely. Because right now Ferrari, being at Ferrari, will have no pressure because everyone knows the car is bad. So if you perform well, it's actually like a bonus. Like, oh, you're a really good driver because you performed well at a uh, shit Ferrari. So Carlos, I don't think he'll be feeling pressure because he's always been primed up for this move. I mean, look at his career uh, in F1 till now. He started in uh, Toro Rosso, then went to Renault, then McLaren, now now Ferrari. So he's priming himself for this move. So I don't think so. Pressure as such. I don't know if you know, but you basically laid out Alonso's 
career path uh, and that oh, yeah. is exactly the relationship that a lot of people have said that science is basically following uh, following in Alonso's footsteps yeah uh, Kapil do you feel that that science is going to regret moving to Ferrari do you think that it was the right decision for him and the team it certainly looks all right now but i have a feeling that there might be a silver lining for either him or the team if if not both because uh, well he's young so he's still got a lot of time to jump on another train if and just you know get out of ferrari at the worst so i mean this is just my opinion so it might be brutal on ferrari and i don't think anyone in the right mind would leave ferrari but i have a bad feeling about this relationship very well might be following the first step of alonso and his move to ferrari and we all know how it turned out in the end it was good to say to at its best but then it was very unforgiving in its nature where both of them wanted the championship so bad that when it didn't work out it is imploded on itself and then alonso made the decision to just leave all together so i don't know i i think it's too early to say how it will pan out in a few years time but science will definitely not be the happiest candidate right now given for ferrari's performance yeah, yeah i just think that the fi's decision to freeze development has been a double whammy to ferrari's um, exactly. earlier issues and i think that sign and Honestly the sport and FIA are just making all the decisions to keep Mercedes up ahead. Every single decision that's been made has been in Mercedes favor but that's a different topic and I don't want to get into it because that's a that be event and not a podcast. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Anuj, what do you think about Sainz and and Ferrari? Yes, yeah, I uh, for next year I have zero hopes because we all know how the car is. but i would be interested in 2022 actually because the recent ferrari restructuring they've got i think rory brian back in the management and if you guys don't know he was the uh, designer who designed all of the seven cars seven cars that schumacher won the championship yes. in yes so so he's coming back and he has a major role in the 2022 car I don't know if you know but I think he was, was he the one I'm sorry question was he the one who actually contributed to the de- uh, the error of the 2017 car Yes yes he 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 was he also had a major part in 2017 and the chassis of 2017 car was so brilliant that uh, eventually even Mercedes and Red Bull copied the concept So yeah I'm pre- I'm really interested in how Ferrari will turn out in 2020 And the funny part is Ferrari changed the chassis and error after that season because they didn't believe it worked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know how Ferrari is. They're like Great really team. clowns. Great they team. they should just remove their Mar- Maranello headquarters and put a clown circus there. <laughs> Call it Maranello baby. But <laughs> <laughs> but I think that leads a fundamental question that obviously they don't understand the car or they choose not to. Whatever no, no, if they don't understand it or if they don't want to understand it because there's just too much politics in the management and stuff. Like why why would you do what you're doing right now Ferrari <laughs> I agree with you but I don't I think they're missing a key aspect of the team which is a top driver to explain what the shortcomings of the car are and I think that is fundamentally speaking that is why I disagree with Vettel being let go because if they don't understand the car if they got the problem with the setup if they need to understand the car better you're letting go of the most intelligent driver on the grid and i strongly felt that a slightly more experienced driver coming in like halkenberg or perez would probably help their development far, far more than bring a youngster in but now they are stuck with two youngsters even though formula 1 drivers have an insane understanding of the car from a very base level and from even from a instinct but experience is the best teacher in all spheres of life and which is why i strongly felt somebody like vettel and I believe Alonso was another driver that was considered but talks didn't pan out would have been a far better option rather than going for another youngster. Really it's a sh- it's a shame that I think that if if their 2020 if the 2020 car was uh was competitive and if they sort out their engine issue I believe that they that they will be I think way ahead of Red Bull as well if they sort out their engine issues and I believe they will be using some of their token developments on their engine. So if they sort that out and Sainz gets a good car, 
I don't see her, I don't see him regretting the decision. But right now, Ferrari are in a very tough spot with a set of inexperienced drivers and a car which, let's face it, is a second of Mercedes, second plus of Mercedes, both in race and in quality trim. Uh, I mean, where do you go? Can from I there? add something? No, of course. Can where do you something? go from there? Yeah. I think Ferrari are like two closed doors of a team for us to be commenting on the management and stuff, because for like, like they're so secretive that. Um, an Italian mafia, like an, yeah, the head of the Italian mafia, might be controlling everything in the team. It's that secretive. So commenting whether they understand the car or not, or they or why they didn't give uh, Sebastian the new contract. I think so. It's not like we don't have enough facts to uh, you know clearly make an opinion or judge the situation. Yeah, I mean you're right. Uh, I mean yes, you're, you're, you couldn't be more right. Ferrari are known for hiding key information but at the same time they had a very similar concept of the car in 2019 they have obviously i think only th- hmm. only thing that's lacking right now is their engine they're like if i'm not wrong they're 50 uh, bhp lower than mercedes and if they really want to sort out their engine issues then actually the guy who developed the mercedes turbo engines from 2014 he just left Mercedes, so he's in the market. He's in the market now. So if they really want to sort it out, they can probably hire him. I'm sure he'll have some kind of non-compete, but Ferrari have already found a way to bend the rules of find loopholes. At least I think in the Schumacher time, Ferrari were experts at finding a small gap in their fund regulations to develop an insane car. But again, that's a different topic. Yeah, I think that was uh, more because of uh, John Todd and Ross Braun. If yeah. I'm not wrong. Yeah. That, that is exactly Ooh. what Ferrari are missing right now. But coming down to why I was saying they don't understand the car, Aditya. Uh, 2018, they tried to make updates to the car. That lost in the championship. None of the updates worked. They yeah. messed up the car. And they admitted so themselves. When they rolled the updates back in USA, Kimi got his last win. 2019, they had a great car in, in terms of chassis. They did not understand the aero concept of the car at all. They put on aero for this year, and I and I and I f- still believe that the aero for this car isn't isn't anything great because even with the engine deficit they have, they are still not gaining too much time. Yeah. If you look at the delta, they aren't gaining time in the corners to McLaren and Racing Point and or. or Red Bull is a top team, so let's not talk it. But even to McLaren and Racing Point, they aren't gaining uh, much time in the corners either. So obviously, their car in terms of chassis and aero is lacking as well as power unit. Right? Yeah. You can also hear how um, faint uh, Vettel is on the throttle. Like, he's so he's not at all confident. Like, he's just very um, nervous going on the throttle. So you can clearly see the chassis is not good. Exactly. So Ferrari obviously don't understand the, their current concept of their car. Otherwise, they would have brought updates, if not mid-season last year, if not end of season last year, using any of their tokens. In the last three years, they haven't understood their car. And I feel they should go back to a shorter wheelbase design, which they actually did understand. But again, this is becoming way too technical. I apologize. Bottom line is they could have used a more experienced driver. Do you, do you guys agree or, or disagree? Yeah, I agree. I think they were in talks with uh, Daniel Ricciardo. Maybe there were rumors that he might sign for Ferrari. Yeah, I believe Leclerc and Ricciardo are good friends. So yeah, that would have been a fun, con- fun team, team partnership. Yeah, and I, I think Ricciardo deserves a top team again. So, um, McLaren, they're they're getting there, but they're not quite there right now. Maybe 2022. But I I don't want to see Ricciardo also end up like Felipe Massa. Like one of one of the great drivers without a championship. F1, I think 2008 is still the saddest moment in Formula One for me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember is. watching that race and I remember celebrating. I was screaming, and my dad said, "Sit down. Hamilton's not across the line yet." And I said, "What are you saying? Nothing can happen. Master's finished the race." Yeah. And then I see Glock. My heart drops. But okay, never mind. Uh. Uh, talking about disappointing Ferrari Ferrari engine cars, um, Haas have not confirmed Grosjean for next season and Grosjean has actually fueled the fire by saying that spending lockdown with his family has uh, emphasized his or re-evaluated his priorities and he doesn't know what he's going to do next season. Is Haas finally going to get rid of him? What do you guys think? Grosjean, he, he's a very technical driver. 
and uh, he's not certainly as fast as Magnussen, but he brings a lot to the table. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but I think it was last season that when the upgrades started to come for Haas and it wasn't working, and Grosjean kept saying that the upgrades are not working and we should go back to the previous pick. But the team didn't listen, and the team just kept uh, keep just just were out of the points and all the races, and then. When they actually went back to the oldest pick that was in the testing, they started performing better. So, Roman, he actually brings a lot of technical details, a lot of experience to the table. But suddenly, he's not as fast as Magnus and I feel. Uh, yeah, who do you think will replace him? Uh, yeah, who do you think could replace him? Yeah. Probably... Callum Eilert. Why not? <laughs> so step up for him. They flip a coin, either Eilert goes to Alpha and Falcon <laughs> goes to Haas or the other way around. Other way around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I have an interesting theory here. Yeah. It's a pretty long shot, but what if uh, they manage to get Sergio Perez? Haas has been a struggling team and Perez brings the money too and they need money right now. So, and with Kevin Magnussen, a very experienced driver like Sergio Perez, yeah. They can improve their car. They have a, they have money as well. So, I don't know what will stop them. That is a fair point. And I think you just stole a few words out of my mouth. I was going to say, we are assuming Haas is going to stay in Formula 1. I don't believe they have too many years left in the sport. Um, I think the new regulations, the current versions of cars are far too technical for a country which has developed NASCAR. Driving in circles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Haas have had some incredible cars across the years, and I'm just being facetious. But and more importantly, incredible drivers too. It'll be a shame to see them leave the sport. Uh, but if they do, Aditya, who do you think will will uh, take up that second seat? The second seat, definitely one of the drivers from the uh, Ferrari Academy. I think Haas are a team that needs results to get the sponsor money. So yeah. if you have two fast drivers, you you will have more chance of getting better results, which in turn gets you more money and you can develop the car. Yeah. Because it's not always experience that develops a car. Uh, sometimes even like the the staff in the factory they can develop a car as well. Yeah. So I think they'd be going for uh, two quick drivers in, instead of an experienced driver. Haas have always done that. One name that I expected to come up which hasn't yet is Piero Fittipaldi. I think he's done a lot of practice sessions with the team. Yeah, he's the third driver. He's a, do you think he has a chance to take, take, take that step up if Grosjean leaves or do you think that will go to one of the FDA youngsters? Yeah, uh, Fittipaldi is also a uh, Ferrari Academy driver. So. Yeah, sorry, I mean one of the more popular uh, popular ones we spoke about earlier. From yeah, popular so, team. Ferrari have that option. So, I think it's up for Ferrari to decide this. It could be anyone. I think Haas would prefer uh, Fittipaldi because he's already tested the cars. He, he already has experience. Yeah, but ultimately, the final call is for Ferrari. Yeah, I just think they'll have some kind of wanker in the team. <laughs> yeah, but, but the point that Aditya made that the car needs, they, the team needs needs result, that that actually proves my point of Sergio Perez more because he has experience, he is fast and he brings money. He, he's the perfect package for Haas right now. I uh, couldn't agree more. Um, in fact, I uh, think you should write a formal letter to Gunter because this is... Uh, there's no better driver. For me, Perez is already a top top six driver, and if he wants to stay in Formula One, I think that is his best result in terms of a mutually beneficial opportunity. There's no other team which will benefit from Perez as much as Haas, and I think he's the best driver for them. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> let's. I want to bring another aspect to this. Would Perez agree to go to take a huge step down from Racing Point to Haas? It's not the point agree to the... whether he'll agree or not. It's about what are the choices. Yeah, I mean, he'll want to stay in Formula One. Anna just right. Uh, there is right now. It's he has to find a drive. Which drive he gets a secondary. I believe he'll take Williams if if it comes his way. Or maybe he already knows he's in Racing Point for next season because there were reports that Perez has uh, injected some cash into the team from uh, his uh, backing from Carlos Slim. So. 
I think he's doing all he can to stay at racing point because that's the best bet for him. I, I don't think so right now he'll be looking at other teams hmm. because he knows that racing point is is too good of an opportunity to let go. Yeah, they've always had a very Or maybe the cash he injected inside Racing Point, maybe Lawrence used that cash to buy out Stone, uh, buy out Perez instead. So the end of the day, it could very well be Vettel to Haas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. But I have a very strong feeling that Vettel is already with Aston Martin. I mean, the rumors that just they just keep getting strong day by day. and one one of the sites even reported that it's already been done and the announcement was to be made last weekend but it was delayed because uh, Perez tested positive for covid-19 and if your driver is missing all a race for COVID, because of covid-19 and the same weekend you announce that you're sacking him for the next year that we are very bad we are so what assurance is there for the stroll to stay in the team is that i think yeah but his dad is just the leader of a consortium so the consortium may feel that uh, perez is a stronger driver and they would want two strong drivers his dad yeah, but, the... but stroll isn't actually a, like a very i don't want to say like how do you say it? he he also performs well and he you you're forgetting 2017 podiums with william he won a sort of podium in azerbaijan front row start in monza yeah and i think uh, last season he was the driver who made most places in the opening lap and he he's been he's been very good his qualifying pace yeah. i don't think it's that good but his race craft is very nice and yeah. Yeah. if you see if you see his junior formula career he in his formula 3 season i think he he beat esteban ocon george russell to the championship so that's something i i don't see you winning i don't see anyone winning formula 3 just because of money so yeah, yeah. can i just add one thing so, to his aditya before you before you go uh, into that uh, i just want to make one point about formula 1 in general uh this sport has always been about money and if racing point did not have lawrence stroll they would probably not be where they are in terms of pace right now formula 1 is a money <laughs> sport and uh i would rather have stroll who may not be the best driver in the world and one good driver than two great drivers in a shitty car aka mercedes or aka look at ferrari they may have all the best drivers and all the best talent but without a proper car without and even though they have money it may they may have missed, missed on development but racing point got that right they wouldn't be where they were without yeah. the money that stroll has put into the team so it's only fair that he is part of formula 1 nikki lauda did it nikki lauda bought his way into formula 1 nobody nobody bitches about him uh because that's formula 1 that money the financials are a very very important part merit has only only so much place in f1 unfortunately yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Lawrence Stroll, he is in Formula One because of his son. That that's the main thing why he's in Formula One. He bought when he saw that Williams isn't working out. He bought him a team when he saw that that Racing Point also isn't working out. He bought a whole company of road cars. So agree. Yeah, I think so, Lawrence Stroll, Lawrence Stroll would want to have Sebastian Vettel with his son because not only would Sebastian Vettel improve the team, but he. Sebastian Vettel could also guide Stroll to be a better driver. Yes. Yeah. So like a driver coach basically. So like I was making a point about uh, Stroll's F3 career. Um he actually rented out uh, entire tracks with his team to do private testing. They were the, they were the only teams to do that. So he got way more track time and uh, in F3 back then you had open development of chassis and engine. So yeah, definitely see He had a big upper hand on his competition. That's an interesting point. I don't know about this, but that's actually very, very interesting. In fact, it's very similar to something Schumacher used. I'm not trying to compare Stroll to Schumacher as a driver. No, that's not. <laughs> I would never do that in my life. But even uh, back during the Schumacher days, when open development was allowed on cars, even mid uh, weekend, um, Ferrari would fly Schumacher back to Maranello with certain changes. They would put updates onto the car in Maranello. They would test the test the car around the Fiorano track. and then fly back the next that evening or the next day to the circuit for the grand prix that is that is what schumacher is doing so i guess racing at the end of the day unfortunately or fortunately has a shit ton of money involved and that is always going to play a huge part in which drivers are chosen who wins championships and uh, all of that but i think that's all we have time for guys and thank you so much for watching 
uh, Aditya from Front Wing Damage. If you guys yeah. don't know, he is a prof- he is a professional ra- race car driver. So we wish him the best of luck and uh, and you. I hope and obviously congratulate him on his journey so far. He's only 17 years old, yet he's been in the sport for 17 years. I wonder how he reached the pedals when he started. Seven. So, seven, seven years. Seven years. Sorry. Yeah. So I wonder how he reached the pedals yeah. when he when he started. But <laughs> anyway, thank you for tuning in. Please do follow F1 uh, F1 India memes uh, IRC as well as Front Wing Damage. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. We have a, the the next race review of the 70th anniversary Grand Prix coming up next Monday. Please do join us for that. And good news. The IRC season five starts uh, starts on the on Independence Day, the 15th of August, and we will be bringing you preseason testing this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. So please do tune in for that, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you.